This video is sponsored by Tyler Boone, the founder of TI Projects. His high quality titanium design skills have brought beautiful custom merchandise across the blockchain sector. The Guardian Arc Plate is a solution for self custody. It helps keep your private keys safe and protected. Fireproof, waterproof, future proof. I couldn't have had a better sponsor for this important video. Click on the link in the description and watch for his newly designed accessories that are coming to the wave of innovation, the XRP conference in Australia this March. Genfinity, the digital media platform facilitating Web3 education and engagement with weekly podcasts, interviews, and research, hosted a live X space where I introduced to my audience Anastasia Marchenkova. She's a quantum physicist with 15 years in quantum technology. She boasts distinguished tenures at the Quantum Communications and Optics Lab at Georgia Tech and the University of Maryland Joint Quantum Institute. Currently, she's deeply immersed in the realm of superconducting qubits. She recently received updates from BTQ, a company with its own groundbreaking research and the latest in quantum product innovations. In this video, we open up with a very brief overview of some of their products, followed by the wonderful insight from Chris Tam, the BTQ Head of Partnerships. This is a very exciting company. Do enjoy. BTQ offers a range of post-quantum products from custom-built languages and compilers to cloud-accessible software solutions and dedicated hardware. PQ Scale is a novel quantum-resistant blockchain scaling technique that uses zero-knowledge proofs to speed up transactions and lower costs. Also, BTQ builds applications for privacy-minded solutions, specialized for accelerating ZK, our zero-knowledge computation with fast, affordable technology, that is API accessible. Post-quantum cryptography for blockchains, this is a huge area of our business where we've developed several scaling solutions for, for blockchains. When, when we think about the difficulty to break encryption, um, you know, we, we look, we typically look at the, uh, the assumptions or the primitives and really regardless of the blockchain structure or architecture, you know, whether it's linear like Ethereum or whether it's a DAG, um, regardless of the structure, they're all relying on the same assumption on the same mathematical problem, which is the assumption of the difficulty of, of of prime factorization or the discrete logarithm problem. And when it comes to breaking those algorithms, it, it, it's agnostic of the blockchain architecture. Uh, it, it really just depends on you know, how difficult is it to break, to, to, to solve those assumed to be hard problems like discrete log and, and, and prime factorization. Um, so it doesn't really play a role and it doesn't make you more safe. Really what you need to focus on uh, from a blockchain security pr perspective is the underlying cryptographic primitives. You know, what's the amount of time that it takes your transaction to be included into a block? And then for that block to be passed around through the network to be either mined or, you know, have a, have a stake or be staked against. Uh, and then once the network comes to consensus, then it's finalized on chain. And what you, and how you can think about this, this increase in latency is, you know, if these post-quantum signatures are 10 times the, the size of, of pre-quantum, that means that every block which has a, a transaction information in it and the signature, it's gonna, every block is able to fit in fewer transactions. Um, and so as a user, you know, you're waiting potentially several blocks longer for your transaction to be included and finalized on the blockchain. Uh, so we recently completed a, a grant with Stellar, which is a peer-to-peer -peer network uh, has a market capitalization of, of over two billion, I believe, and and a daily transaction volume of thirty five million. Um, and our project with Stellar implemented this infrastructure to upgrade existing 
you know, vulnerable digital signatures to post quantum digital signatures. Again, using the technologies that the technologies that we've built at, at BTQ. Uh, so the outcome of that was this. You can think about it as a as an aggregate signature as a service, uh, which essentially takes in a bundle of signatures associated with it with a block, and then compresses it to then push it back on chain. And so this reduces the cost of transmitting those, you know, those very large and expensive signatures uh, that, that we previously saw. We've also recently uh, recently completed a grant with Starkware, where we developed the first post-quantum digital signature aggregation contract on StarkNet. Uh, maybe just a, a high level. So Starkware or StarkNet is a, is a layer two on Ethereum, and, and they are... Uh, they are the stewards of Starks, which are this zero knowledge, privacy preserving technology that essentially allow you to to bundle up transactions into a into a zero knowledge proof and then post it back on chain. And so, what we did there was we implemented this this Falcon signature verification contract. And Falcon is a is is this NIST standardized post quantum digital digital signature algorithm. Uh, so we were the first team to bring PQC onto Starkware. And we have a lot of ideas for how we can, you know, now that we have this this infrastructure, how we can start bringing this to actual users and and applications to start using this this post quantum infrastructure. So we are also building a test net right now, which is essentially a snapshot of Ethereum. And what we've done with this test net is that we forked, so we 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 took a snapshot of Ethereum and then replaced all of the vulnerable ECDSA. With our own, uh, with well, Falcon, which is this this NIST standardized algorithm, um, and then we built a bunch of of kind of peripheral architecture in order to support these Falcon transactions, Falcon signing, and this testnet is essentially the first realization of a post quantum Ethereum, and what we're looking to do now is is to is to develop this testnet even further by bringing on other teams to try out their applications in this test net and to see, you know, essentially what does a post quantum Ethereum look like? How will it act with the ideas and applications that we have running now? And trying to grow this, you know, this quantum resistant Ethereum ecosystem. So our hope is that once we've been able to, you know, shepherd this into Ethereum, then teams can simply pick this up and use some of the libraries that we've built on, on the side and, and we plan on open sourcing these and, and so that they can pick up these libraries and essentially incorporate PQC into their application and their chain seamlessly. Um, so really looking for, for teams feedback on, on you know, different use cases and, and any other ideas that they have that would make this experience easier for them. One of the ways that we want to make sure that our solution isn't only built for Ethereum, it is by implementing a lot of these, by implementing this code in uh, in like WASM compatible format. Uh, for these like very technically or more technical users, WASM is, is essentially it's WebAssembly and many, many chains support WebAssembly. And so what we've realized is that if we can implement our solutions that, you know, that are, that can target WASM, then we can actually port those solutions to other chains that aren't Ethereum based. And that should make it a lot easier to spread out the effects of, of what we've been building. Yeah, BTQ does specialize in, in a variety of subfields. Our work in uh, with NIST on the standardizations research. And so that's obviously a huge goal for us. We want to play a, a pivotal role in helping countries and, and organizations transition to PQC safely and securely. And then also a lot of work in privacy preserving applications using zero knowledge proofs. So Tornado Cash was really using this zero knowledge ZK technology. And that's a lot of what we're building at B2Q as well, uh, because we see a need for privacy, even in the post-quantum era. You know, when we when we when we talk about digital ledgers and, and, and cryptography, there's a lot of nuance as to things that you're you're willing to reveal to the outside world. Um uh, and then things that you would even want to keep secret even within the, the a secure uh, a secure encryption channel so um so things like selective reveal are are, are things that we're very much interested interested in even within a secured encryption uh, a secured encryption channel 
you can selectively reveal only parts of the information that you're willing to disclose. And this will be, uh, we, we, we imagine this will have huge effects and huge use cases in CBDCs. So we've actually had some conversations with the Bank of Canada recently uh, with researchers there, and, and they are very interested in anonymous smart contracts, anonymous wallets, in order to set up these you know, guard guardrails for when a transaction is broadcasted across a CBDC network, certainly to external parties, they need to have a privacy aspect and to make sure that those transactions and all of the information in those transactions aren't being available, aren't becoming available to a quantum adversary.